Welcome back. So, let us continue. Today, we will start a new topic. We will be talking about two different types of futures, the index futures and the interest rate futures. These futures have widespread applications on the one hand. On the other hand, they have some nuances which the learner should be acquainted with and that is why I have picked these two specific type of futures uh, to be discussed in detail. So, let us start with the index futures. But before I talk about index futures, I need to uh, recap or revise certain aspects of the CAPM model of uh, uh, stock prices and stock returns. And uh, therefore, we will uh, have a quick review of uh, CAPM and then we will proceed to the theory of index futures. The CAPM market, uh, let us start with the CAPM market. The risk of a portfolio can be segregated into two independent components. And uh, uh, these two components of risk are called systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Systematic risk is the risk that percolates down to the individual security or the portfolio due to the randomness that prevails in market returns or market prices. I repeat systematic risk is that component of risk which arises out of the randomness of the market and the correlations between the market and the respective securities constituting the portfolio. Unsystematic risk is intrinsic to the various securities that form the portfolio. That is uh, something which is specific to the securities which is, which is independent of the flow of or the randomness of the market. Systematic risk is non-diversifiable because it relates to a common index which is the market index whereas, unsystematic risk can be diversified by having a collection of securities to form a portfolio. Uh, in fact, diversification is one of the very common approach approaches uh, to risk mitigation in the context of portfolio management. So, if you combine a number of securities, the larger the number of securities in fact, the uh, greater would be the, the reduction in unsystematic risk. Uh, because you see uh, the point is unsystematic risk is basically random and uh, if you can may have a large enough combination of uh, random variables, it is quite likely that you end up with uh, lesser variance on the unsystematic risk thereby goes down. And therefore, the systematic risk is undiversifiable, the unsystematic risk is diversifiable. The systematic risk is measured by the regression coefficient between the market returns and the, uh, and the uh, individual security or portfolio returns uh, uh, with the market returns being obviously the independent variable and the, and the security or the portfolio returns being the dependent variable. It is called beta. So, Systematic risk is measured in terms of beta. Unsystematic risk on the other hand is the variance associated with the residual term when we write the CAPM equation. Uh, let me just uh, explain it uh, in a little bit more detail. In the context of uh, the CAPM model or for that matter the, uh, the single index model, we can write the uh, return on an individual security R i i is the security as uh, uh, comprising of the alpha let us call it alpha i plus beta i r m. I am using the same single index model here plus a random error term e i. Now, the variance of this e i is uh, supposed to generate the unsystematic risk It is intrinsic to the security please note that. Whereas, the variance of r m is deemed to generate the systematic risk component of the risk. And please note both these risks are orthogonal, they are independent of each other. In, in fact, we have the relation sigma i square which is the total risk of the portfolio uh, is equal to beta i square sigma m square plus sigma of e i square. This, so, this is the unsystematic risk and this is the systematic risk and this is the total risk. So, let us continue. Unsystematic risk is measured by the variance of the residual term uh, and in the context of a portfolio, the unsystematic risk of a portfolio is measured in terms of summation of x i square sigma of e i square with the summation over all the securities constituting the portfolio. 
right beta of a portfolio scales in the same way as return that is the beta of a portfolio of securities is equal to the weighted average beta of the constituent securities just like expected return of a portfolio is equal to the weighted average expected return of the constituent securities hence there is conformity between risk and return in the CAPM framework. This is one of the very important outcomes of the research of uh, William Sharp, uh, which he built upon uh, in the context of the mean variance portfolio optimization model uh, propounded by uh, propounded by Markowitz. Yes. The market rewards or prices only systematic risk. So, this is the fundamental assumption of the CAPM model or the fundamental outcome rather of the CAPM model that market will give you expected returns provided you take systematic risk. If, uh, if your portfolio is devoid of systematic risk and uh, you have a, a, a huge amount of unsystematic risk, you will not get any market expected returns or you will get any not get any rewards from the market. Market rewards only systematic risk. The higher the systematic risk level of your portfolio, the higher are your expected returns. But please note the word expected returns. It is not actual returns, it is expected returns. So, higher systematic risk means what? Means you are likely to get higher returns, but uh, there is also a higher likelihood because the systematic risk part is higher. So, there is also a higher likelihood of the uh, returns not materializing. So, the expected returns are higher, the possibility of the returns not materializing is also higher if you are taking high systematic risk. And conversely, if you are taking low systematic risk, then you will have low expected returns, but those expected returns would be very likely to mature to materialize because the, the risk is less. So, that is the relationship between risk and return in fact, but the important outcome of the CAPM model in so far as the CAPM is concerned is that market will only consider systematic risk when it is pricing a security. Securities at equilibrium will be priced in, in context of or in conformity with their respective levels of systematic risk and uh, so also the investors uh, uh, higher the systematic risk taken by an investor higher would be his expected returns. It assumes, so the in continuation of the previous postulate, it assumes that unsystematic risk can be managed or eliminated for that matter by adequate diversification to any level chosen by the investor. So, it assumes that the unsystematic risk can be managed or by diversification to any level chosen by the investor and as a result of it the market does not give you any benefit by taking uh, for taking any unsystematic risk. You may take as much unsystematic risk as you like, but the market will not reward you for that. Taking an appropriate position in the market index, market portfolio enables the investor to manage the systematic risk of a portfolio. This is quite simple. You see uh, the basic thing is that uh, the beta which is a measure of systematic risk of the portfolio is uh, uh, equal to the weighted average beta of the constituents. So, if one of the constituents is a market portfolio, uh, then uh, obviously, that mark the, the amount that you put in into the market portfolio enables you to manage the systematic risk of the overall portfolio. The added point is that because the market portfolio is efficient as we will come to in a minute, the unsystematic risk of the market portfolio is 0 and therefore, addition of the market portfolio to your portfolio will not change the level of unsystematic risk of your portfolio. So, uh, while on the one hand the uh, investment in the market portfolio will enable you to manage the systematic risk of your portfolio, it will let the unsystematic risk remain unchanged. So, taking an appropriate position in the market index uh, or the market portfolio enables the investor to manage the systematic risk that is beta of the portfolio. Since the market portfolio is efficient that is it has no unsystematic risk, taking a position in the market portfolio does not affect the unsystematic risk of the portfolio that is what I explained uh, uh, just now. So, talking about the market portfolio, the market portfolio is the universal risky portfolio. I do not have time to go into the entire theory of the CAPM model, but basically the CAPM model envisages a two investment uh, model or a, a two asset model, uh, where one of the asset is the risk free asset and the other asset is the market portfolio. And it says that uh, any level of risk uh, envisaged 
uh, by the uh, investor can be created using these two components. Uh, in other words, every investor in the market would be investing some money uh, or some component of his money, some component of his investment in the market portfolio and some component of the investment in the risk free portfolio in order to generate a portfolio of his desired risk level. So, that that is basically what we also call the two fund theorem. So, market portfolio is the universal risky portfolio, market portfolio is efficient, it is devoid of any unsystematic risk because it is fully diversified, uh, you cannot diversify it further and as a result of which it has no unsystematic risk. Market portfolio is fully diversified and hence devoid of any unsystematic risk that is what I mentioned just now. The total risk of the market portfolio is its systematic risk and beta of the market portfolio is unity because you are regressing the market portfolio against itself and therefore, beta would be equal to 1. Now, let us talk about basic theory of index futures. Consider rupees V, rupees V worth of investment in, in a particular share, let us call that share S. Let the beta of S be beta S. Let the beta of another stock M star, stock M star. So, we have, we have an investment of V in stock S, the beta of stock S is beta S and we add to that uh, a stock M star which has a beta of 1 and a short position in M star is taken worth rupees beta S into V. So, now we have a portfolio comprising of V value of share S with beta equal to beta S and beta S V value short of a stock M star beta M star is equal to 1. If you work out the beta of this combined portfolio, you find a very interesting result. Because the beta of the portfolio is equal to the weighted average beta of its constituents, what we find is that the beta of the portfolio consisting of S and M star is equal to 0. And therefore, by using this uh, mechanism, this simple elementary mechanism, we have been able to construct a portfolio which is devoid of systematic risk, a portfolio completely devoid of systematic risk. We have this portfolio, we have this security S uh, uh, with an investment V in S with a, with a beta of beta S. Uh, we short stock M star with a beta of M with a value equal to V S in V into beta S and what we find is that the beta of this combined portfolio consisting of a long position in S and a short position in M star is uh, equal to 0 and therefore, this combined portfolio has 0 systematic risk. Now, what happens if this, this stock M star that I have been talking about is replaced by the market portfolio? As we saw just now, the uh, beta of the market portfolio is also equal to 1 and systematic risk is measured only in terms of beta and therefore, by replacing M star by M, we are not affecting the systematic risk of the portfolio and the systematic risk continues to be 0. So, what happens if M star is equal to M the market portfolio. So, that beta M star is equal to beta M is equal to 1, but M. Now, let us talk about the unsystematic risk. As far as the unsystematic risk is concerned, the unsystematic risk of M is equal to 0. Why? Because it is the market portfolio, it is fully diversified and therefore, there is no unsystematic risk in so far as M is concerned. And because the, uh, the portfolio M uh, has no unsystematic risk, the addition of M to S will not change the unsystematic risk of S. So, that is the interesting part. So, on the one hand by using this market combination of market portfolio and S which we started with, we have been able to construct a portfolio that has 0 systematic risk, but has unsystematic risk which is identical to the original portfolio of S. So, let me read it out for you. Now, what happens if M star is equal to M the market portfolio, so that beta M star is equal to beta M is equal to 1, but beta M has, o but M has only systematic risk because it is an efficient portfolio. As far as the hedge portfolio is concerned, beta P is equal to 0, uh, systematic risk of the portfolio continues to be 0 ir, uh, uh, on the replacement of M star by M. However, what about unsystematic risk? The unsystematic risk is unchanged because the addition of M to the portfolio will not change the unsystematic 
uh, risk of S because M has no unsystematic risk. Since M does not have any unsystematic risk, it follows that the unsystematic risk of S remains unchanged by the addition of M. The inference is by taking an appropriate position in a suitable number of units of the market portfolio, the investor has been able to completely hedge the systematic risk of the portfolio while keeping the unsystematic risk unchanged. So, systematic risk has been eliminated, unsystematic risk has been unaffected. So, principle of index future, this, is form, this forms the backdrop on the basis of which the index futures have been created in the market. Since futures prices and spot prices are expected to move in tandem due to arbitrage considerations, a position in futures on the market portfolio. You are now replacing the market portfolio by futures on the market portfolio. You started with M star an arbitrary portfolio with a beta of 1, it may or may not have unsystematic risk. We replaced M star by M the market portfolio which has only systematic risk with no un which has only uh, uh, systematic risk and no unsystematic risk, yes. And uh, now, what we are doing is we are replacing M that is the market portfolio by futures on the market portfolio. So, since future prices and spot prices are expected to move in tandem due to arbitrage, position in futures on the market portfolio in lieu of spot amounts to a similar impact on the market card on the portfolio cardinals. So, if you replace the investment in the market portfolio by an appropriate position in the futures on that market portfolio, you are likely to get a similar impact on your original portfolio comprising of stockers. So, that is what uh, is the importance or that is what is the philosophy rather of index futures. Hence, use of futures on M will yield similar effects as positions in M itself. Instead of using the spot investment in the market index, we are now investing in the futures on the market index. That is, the, it reduces, reduces systematic risk and leaves the unsystematic risk unchanged. So, if you take futures position in the market portfolio as part of your portfolio, then what happens is the systematic risk is reduced or systematic risk is managed rather, rather uh, whether it is reduced or increased would depend on the nature of your position, nature of your position in the futures on the market portfolio and um, the unsystematic risk remains unchanged. Furthermore, futures have the additional advantage of requiring no initial investment other than margins of course, for taking positions. So, stock index futures, what are stock index futures? Stock index futures are futures contracts or any stock index like the S and P B S E index uh, Sensex that constitute the underlying asset. A long oblique short position in a stock index future is equivalent to taking a long oblique short position in a futures contract on a portfolio of stocks that is equivalent to the portfolio of stocks constituting the stock index. So, what we are basically doing is we are replacing, you see let us talk about uh, a stock future. A stock future is a futures contract written on an underlying stock. Let us say stock on RIL, uh, stock is RIL. So, we have a future uh, written on RIL. Now, what we are doing is we are replacing RIL by a portfolio of stocks which is equivalent to the portfolio of the stock index for example, the BSC Sensex. So, a stock index future is a futures which is written on a portfolio of stocks which is equivalent to the stock index. So, what does it mean? It means that on the date of maturity of the uh, futures con contract, uh, uh, you should be delivering this uh, uh, portfolio of stocks to the party who is long in this futures contract. So, the short party should be delivering this in the long party. Uh, however, uh, actually of course, the delivery of the index is impractical. So, we talk about cash settlement, we will come back to it. A long oblique short position in a stock index future is equivalent to taking a long oblique short position in a futures contract on a portfolio of stocks that is equivalent to the portfolio of stocks constituting the stock index. The underlying asset of such futures is the index. So, instead of a single stock, 
we are now replacing that single stock by a portfolio of stocks. Which portfolio of stocks? The portfolio of stocks which is representative of the or which is equivalent to the index that is supposed to be the underlying index of the futures contracts for example, the BSC Sensex. Now, the MTM settlement is given by Z star into F t minus F t minus 1. This is the usual the differential between the two settlement prices uh, t minus 1 that is yesterday's settlement price and t that is today's settlement price and you multiply it by z. What is z? Z is the lot size of the contract multiple and the final settlement is done by what? The final settlement is done by setting the value of the futures a price to equivalent to the uh, spot value of the index which, which is the underlying index of the futures contract. So, that is what is given in this final settlement instead of F t we replace F t by S t. This is justified because of the principle of convergence which I have alluded to a number of times. A futures contract on a stock market index represents the right and obligation to buy or to sell a portfolio of stocks characterized by the index. Stock index futures are cash settled. So, that is important that is what I briefly mentioned earlier. Uh, the, it is obviously impracticable to make, make a, a physical settlement of stock index futures. The delivery of the index is impracticable. Uh, in fact, it is absurd and therefore, the uh, settlement of uh, futures contracts is always cash settled. In other words, uh, instead of delivering the index, the uh, the futures price as on the date of maturity of the futures is set equal to the spot value of the index on that date uh, at that point of settlement and the differential thereupon is, is uh, transferred to the respective margin accounts as a final M to M transfer market to, uh, marking to market transfer. The contracts are marked to market daily as is the usual case for most of the futures contracts. Final settlement this is what I mentioned just now on the last trading day the futures price is set equal to the spot index level on the last trading day the futures price is set equal to the spot index level and there is a final mark to market settlement. This is interesting this is important this from the premise of cash settlement on the last trading day the futures price is set equal to the spot index level and there is a final mark to market cash flow. Now, we talk about applications of stock index futures and the three fundamental applications of stock index futures as in uh, fact of most of the derivative contracts we have hedging as the most important application the most fundamental application we have speculation where you take a position uh, based on your perspective of the market's uh, evolution and uh, if the market evolution uh, uh, is uh, as per your perception then you tend to make a profit. On the other hand, if the market evolution is not as per your perception, you tend to make a loss on your open position and that is why in fact, it is called an open position. Then we have index arbitrage where uh, if there is a differential between the uh, arbitrage free price of the futures contract and the actual traded price, you can extract profit out of the system. Now, let us talk about hedging. Stock indices constitute well diversified portfolios of stocks. Hence, in such portfolios all idiosyncratic risk that is the unsystematic risk of individual stocks gets eliminated and only the systematic risk remains. So, when we talk about a market index, we are talking about well diversified portfolios and because the portfolios are well diversified, we, we assume or we understand that uh, the unsystematic risk component is adequately diversified away and the, the risk that remains with such indices is the systematic risk component. Therefore, by taking appropriate positions in stock index futures, an investor is able to manipulate and manage the systematic risk while leaving the unsystematic risk of the portfolio unchanged. Now, typically when we talk about hedging, we are talking about beta management because as I mentioned the application, the application of stock index futures is basically that uh, of uh, um, that is basically that of uh, managing the systematic risk and uh, systematic risk is measured by beta. So, it is basically the management of beta which is achieved by the 
and taking of various positions in stock index futures. The beta management could well manifest itself in various uh, modes, uh, various forms. Beta management could manifest itself as market risk reduction, volatility management or investment management. Then you also have the opportunity of locking in the benefit of stock picking if you have some special, some specific, some insider information about a particular stock. You can derive advantage from uh, that information by insulating your portfolio from the market uh, uh, in so far as the systematic risk is concerned by taking an appropriate position in futures contracts or index, index futures. We shall be looking at an example on this. So, examples of hedging reduction of market risk, a pension fund investor holding a diversified equity portfolio perceiving a fall in stock prices can protect the value of the fund by taking a short position in stock index futures. Because if there is going to be a fall in stock prices, as long portfolio is going to incur a loss, but by taking a short position in stock index futures, if there is a fall in stock uh, in uh, stock prices, there is likely to be a fall in the indices also. And if there is a fall in the indices, the short position on stock index futures would uh, generate profits for him, which could compensate him for the loss on his investment portfolio. Let me repeat this, this is important. If you have an investment portfolio consisting of long position in stocks and you perceive that the market is likely to go down, you could take a short position in index futures to mitigate the damage or mitigate the fall in value due to the possibility of the market going down. Now, how this would operate? Uh, if, the, if the market uh, falls uh, as, per your, as per your perception, the futures, the futures prices would also fall and if there is a fall in the futures prices, your short position in index futures would gain in value and this gain in value could uh, compensate you substantially for the uh, loss that you incurred on your investment position. So, a fall in the equity prices will lead to a fall in the index and the value of the portfolio uh, parallel gains on the future short position. So, fall in the in index would result in a fall in the futures on the index and because you have a short position, you will make a profit on the short uh, position that will compensate you for the loss in value on your primary investment. He will thereby substantially reduce his market risk and earn nearly the risk free rate. He could also earn the risk free rate by selling all the stocks and holding T-bills. However, this would involve high transaction costs as he sold and then bought back the stocks using index futures is far cheaper. So, this is another advantage of using index futures, the frictional costs would be mitigated. Now, we talk about a situation where volatility is managed by index futures. If the fund manager having a long portfolio of stocks believes that the market would become increasingly volatile over the next three months and wished to remove the uncertainty, he could again take a short index futures position to eliminate the market risk. Now, because he is long in the uh, portfolio, long in the portfolio of stocks, if he takes a short position in index futures, he could mitigate the volatility that uh, uh, the volatility in his primary position or his investments will be counteracted or will be annulled by the volatility at the short position in index futures. At the end of three months period, he could close out the futures position and his stock portfolio would again be subject to the market volatility. Then in talking about investment, suppose you plan to invest cash that you will receive in three months time in a diversified portfolio of stocks, but you are worried that the market will rise over the next three months. Now, if the market rises over the next three months, your uh, investment would be uh, over a lesser face value of uh, stocks or bonds, whatever the case may be. And as a result of which your returns would be less over the remaining um, period of your uh, uh, investment horizon. Now, to compensate that, what you do? You take a long position in, uh, in index futures, so that if the stock prices rise and your investment's worth declines, that could be compensated by, by the uh, uh, a increase in value of your long position as well uh, and uh, as a result of it, your loss is mitigated to some extent. Then you can lock in the uh, known futures price today by buying uh, stock index futures and hedge against any future rise in the cash price of the 
stock. So, that is how you can manage your investment positions uh, in, in the future also. If you are going to make an investment after 3 months on, base, on the basis of received and cash at that point in time and uh, you believe that the stocks could rise in price, the indices could rise in, in value uh, in the intervening period of 3 months, you could reduce the detriment to you on account of the rise in value of the stocks at the point at which you are going to make the investment by taking a long position in futures. Your futures will also gain due to the rise in value of the stocks and as a result of it uh, your loss on your uh, uh, at the point of investment 3 months hence uh, would be compensated. Stock picking I will take up after the break. Thank you. <laughs> 